You're alive. You're welcome, folks. I know we're running a little late. This is House Corrections and Institutions Committee. We're picking up um, our discussion on S3, which is a bill that is in House Judiciary Committee. We're looking at Section 5 and 6, which um, Healthcare Committee has been working on. They've also added a new section, Section 7, which we'll get into that's dealing with the Justice Oversight Committee. Um, they are health care committee is looking at this draft right now with their legal counsel and um, we have representative coffee there on behalf of our committee to um, uh, represent our committee on this these two sections and um, we have representative morrissey who's been working intimately with house judiciary on s3 as a whole as well so we have uh, Representative Morrissey with us today. She's here helping us navigate through these uh, section five and six with the rest of the bill. So we're getting all of our bases covered. Um, I'm gonna go over what I'm seeing as changes between the two. We really need to have draft 3.1 in front of us as well as the current draft that they're working on upstairs. Uh, draft 5.1. So quickly going Alice, over. Alice, that's on yeah. our, draft three is on our committee page for April 14th if somebody wants a quick reference to it. Yeah. And then this morning, draft 5.1 was posted. So you really need to have both versions up. So some of it is pretty easy in terms of seeing where the changes are in draft 5.1. What they have done is just highlighted the changes from their previous draft of 3.1, okay? That's how, so you're not gonna see, in 3.1, you saw a lot of highlights in the front, 5.1 where it's not highlighted incorporated the highlighted language from 3.1 and new highlights that changes that language. So that's the process. Are people on track with that or is there confusion? Okay. So in draft 5.1, what they really added was when you're looking at the comparisons with the community services, you're looking not just you're looking at what's currently there, but they wanted to be very clear, currently available, that that's your baseline, what's currently available. That's what they added. On the folks um, comparing mental health services for folks within our correctional facilities, between facilities, um, they also want to incorporate our out-of-state contract that we have down in Mississippi. The previous language was saying Vermonters, in our out-of-state facilities, and they changed that to Vermont residents. And I don't think that would be a problem with how they're classified in DOC. They're under the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections. Um, so I don't know if that would be an issue with DOC or not. For that. Um, on the next page, they have for the forensic working group, they did, um, they took out, if you're on draft 3.1, on the working group, they took out the, the word expertise when you're talking about interested stakeholders being part of this working group. They said, inter, draft 3.1 said interested stakeholders to provide expertise and recommendations necessary to carry out the provisions within this particular section. They took out the word expertise so that it would read that the recommendations necessary to carry out the provisions in subsection B and C of this section. Well, if people have questions, now's the time to ask them. Okay. And for the working group, oops, I got a question. Karen? 
Uh, yeah, so I guess it's going back to the Vermont residents. I'm trying to understand what what that means. So, because I was originally when we were going over it, thinking it was just folks who were um, in uh, Mississippi. Is this broadening it to like any Vermonter? Like, oh no, no, no. What they're referring to are the DO, the folks who are under DOC custody here in Vermont. That, but for lack of beds. They would have been housed in Vermont. We have a contract with Core Civic to house our Vermont offenders in their Mississippi facility. So these are folks who are under the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections here in Vermont. Okay. So I guess I just don't understand what the difference is from Vermonters to Vermont residents. Is there a big difference or just? A word preference. You know, I don't know. That's, I mean, that's why I brought it up. I don't know. These are. These should are should we look to bring DOC in? You can have people who have come to Vermont and committed a crime, but who aren't originally from here. So I don't know if they would consider that ineligible. You know, if somebody from Massachusetts come here and commits a crime, they might have lived here for three years, but it was all when they were incarcerated. So does that make them a Vermonter or a Vermont resident? I, I'm actually not sure the answer to that question, but I do know people from other states who come here and commit crimes serve their time here. They're on, the issue is they're under the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections. So that may be more the language that should be there that they are serving a sentence and they're under the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections because that's how they get there. It doesn't matter where they come from. They've been sentenced and they're under the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections. Um, so Mary suggested to connect with DOC, um, and I think we should do that. And I, Whoops, oh, Karen? If I can just add, I guess I would just be curious to um, know, because this, this came from the Health Committee, Health Care Committee, of what, what prompted the change for them? Because I think if I was just reading it, I'd be like, okay, Vermont residents, but knowing that it, specifically changed? I'm like, okay, what is the reasoning from their perspective? Are they trying to get at something? I don't think they know the terminology of the DOC world. <laughs> so that could be it too. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's the issue. Kurt? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know why they didn't just use say Vermont inmates, but um, there are also, are there not uh, Vermont inmates who are in other out-of-state facilities besides Mississippi? Don't we have some high security people that are, or other people that are in other prisons because they can't be in the same prison with a person who they killed or not killed, but uh, affected or something like that? For maximum security, yes, they are. We also participate in an interstate compact for interstate swaps of inmates. Um, I think the goal upstairs was for the contract we have with Core Civic, because that's where the bulk, I mean, the others are dispersed. You might have one inmate in one state, you'd have another inmate in another state. Um, also, yeah. we might have some federal folks who are Vermont residents but they're under the federal jurisdiction. So they're in a federal bed in another state. Um, I noticed they made facil facilities, they make it plural. <laughs> so this is a question I would ask Representative Lippert when he comes in and we yep. might be able to wordsmith this a little bit different. I think they're just not tuned in to DOC's world. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, to be honest with you, Kurt, I did think about that. That we've got one inmate over here, we got another inmate. I didn't pick up that that was the intent of healthcare committee. The intent was our contract with the out-of-state facility. Yeah, I suspect so because they're just comparing mental health services. They're not comparing individual uh, inmates. So yeah. And I, I so think we, you're right. So we'll ask that of Representative Lippert when he comes down and then see what their intent is. And then we can always reach out to DOC as well for that. 
Anything else there before we move on? So they've done a lot of work on the uh, forensic care working group. They did add the superior judge, which was one of, was recommended to us as well. And they did add the Vermont Medical Society, which was also recommended. Um, and on page three, page three, number 14, it's long, line 10 through 12, they changed this one a little bit. Their previous draft had two individuals with lived experience of mental illness. So they added they added three, they added one more. So it'd be three individuals with lived experience, at least one of whom who has lived experience in the criminal justice system or the civil commitment system or both. So they've defined that a little more in terms of what they meant by lived experience. Okay. So that's the changes to the working group. And then it sort of reconfigures their old B in some ways. Um, so it says that DMH would submit the report to the respective committees and then it addresses um, their concerns in a more defined A, B, C, and D. And this is about as far as I got. I got tied up with other issues here for this. So they've reconfigured it where A still deals with the gaps. That's where they included the gaps. So they took part of B1 in draft 3.1, where it says any gaps in the current mental health and criminal justice system structure and opportunities to improve public safety and address the treatment needs of individuals incompetent to stand trial or not guilty by reason of insanity. So they've taken that, that sentence and, and reconfigured it in A, would look at any gaps in the current system and opportunities to improve public safety and address the treatment needs. So they picked up that sentence and to cons this is new, consider the importance of victims' rights in the forensic care process. Looking at, so that was added to looking at um, the gaps and any opportunities there. And then they carved out the competency restoration models that are used in other states to look at both models that do not rely on involuntary meds to restore competency, that is new. And then how cases where competency is not restored, how that is addressed. And that was in, that was also in draft 3.1, but drafted a little differently. And then in D, they're looking at models for other states, which um, in E looks at due process requirements. And they wanted to make clear that for defendants held without adjudication of a crime and presumed innocent, because you are presumed until you are convicted of a crime. You're presumed innocent. F. The language stays the same. And then G and H are brand new. So they've really reconfigured B1. B1, A, B, C, and D. They really reconfigured all of that. Does that make sense to folks? Can you follow that? So B1 is now broken down into capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D, capital E, F, and G, and H. Okay. 
So they've added a G, which is models for forensic treatment other than inpatient facilities, including community-based treatment, and any additional recommendations to address the gaps in the current mental health and criminal justice systems. And opportunities to improve public safety and address the treatment needs for individuals who are incompetent to stand trial or adjudicated not guilty by reason of insanity. So they've really worked through B1. And then they've kept two similar to what was in their previous draft, except on line six. This is recommended, there'd be a preliminary report um, that would be submitted prior to this. And then the department would submit a second preliminary report to Justice Oversight Committee on July 1st. Next year, 2022, as to whether or not, so they included or not, for a forensic treatment facility is needed in Vermont. The previous one was to report whether a forensic treatment facility is needed in Vermont, they included or not. So make your case one way if you need it, make your case the other way if you don't need it. Okay. And the rest of the language on that page stays the same. In C, on or before February of 22, so this is next year, this is, they put this, their own section here. This was the amendment that occurred on the Senate floor about if someone's in not complying with their um, non-hospitalization order, or alternative treatment is not adequate to meet the individual's needs. That's the section there. And they want the report to uh, clarify the process. And then they also added a new D. So they kept the report on February 20. First 2022, the same, but they did add a new D. Yeah, this new D. Okay, so I'm just tracking this. So the final report, which is in D, um, would include evaluations for a forensic treatment facility pursuant to subdivision B2 of this section. So subdivision B2 is um, their preliminary report that would be submitted is my understanding. I don't think that tracks for the dates. Including evaluations pursuant to subdivision B2 of this section. I don't think that tracks the B2. B3, isn't it? I, oh, 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 that B2, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think it tracks. Am I reading this wrong? Con in conducting the work required in this section, including evaluations of the forensic models. So it's the evaluations that's done in B2. But I 
Yeah, B2 has a report has a report to the joint. Yeah, but no. B B2 B2 has a report that's due on July 1st, 22 on whether or not a forensic treatment facility is needed, but they're having this report come in on February 22nd. Oh. That's what I'm picking up. I see. Okay. Yeah, you may be right. <laughs> so that may get picked up upstairs. Based on the recommendations in the preliminary report, which is February 22nd, is when the preliminary report is done. I think we got to look at the dates. We got to look at those dates. It's the preliminary. Yeah, the preliminary looks like the preliminary report is done on or before July 1st, 22. I don't know. This is, let's flag it. So the working group needs to ensure for the forensic treatment facility models. I'm assuming it's for just the forensic treatment facility. That social and racial equity issues are considered and consist consistency with the General Assembly's policy of working towards a mental health system that does not require coercion or the use of involuntary meds. So these two sections were added. And that the- Chair. Yeah, Karen? I have a question on that. Um, wh where is that policy? What, what is the policy that they're ref referencing, the General Assembly's policy? That would be a question for Representative Lippert, but it may also be in state statute. Okay. I just didn't know if it's, so I'm like, oh, should I be knowing this policy? Are there other policies I should know? No, no. That would be to ask Bill. Anything else? And then they're saying that these considerations will be reflected in the final report, which is submitted B3, which is January 1st, 2023. Um, and that the department would access regional and national expertise to present models to the working group for review, including any model recommended by members of the working group. And then they've made clear that members of the working group are entitled to them. And then at the top of the last page, there is a dollar There's a dollar amount of 25,000 that's appropriated to the department from the general fund to complete the work. So there's the put in an appropriation, which then means the bill goes up to appropriations committee. Okay. So we have some questions to ask representative Whippert. Then the last section seven is brand new. And this is a concern that um, I know the chair of healthcare committee has. He shared this with me. Um, um, 
the Justice Oversight Committee has been established quite a while ago to reflect the different arenas of issues within DOC. Uh, the Justice Oversight Committee meets six times, usually five, six times off session. And, and their scope has really expanded over time where it used to be just focused in corrections and now it's also focused in juvenile justice, um, juvenile criminal justice arenas. And so the makeup of the Justice Oversight Committee, there's 10 members, five from the House and five from the Senate. Um, there's a member from appropriations committees, a member from institutions committee, a member from uh, human services committee, a member from judiciary committee, and I believe a member, what am I missing here? Judiciary, Health and Welfare, Institutions, Corrections, and Human Services. But that's, and a member at large. I was thinking Education Committee. That's where I'm getting hung up. Member from Approps, member from Human Services, member from Institutions, and a member from Judiciary. So you've got those four committees covered and a member at large. So you got five folks. I Who's know- Who's the member at large? Butch. I thought so, yeah. Um, so there's concern, I know from the chair of healthcare committee, mental health used to be under the jurisdiction of human services committee. And a few years ago that got carved out and moved over <clears throat> to healthcare committee. And there is not a healthcare committee member on justice oversight. So their proposal is to get rid of our at-large member and put in a member of healthcare committee and add um, an at-large for the Senate because they have health and welfare that takes care of both healthcare and mental health. So they've gotten rid of the at-large member in the house, but they kept the at-large member in the Senate. So you're still at five and five. I'm suggesting that we keep the current makeup and we continue keeping an at-large member and we add the healthcare person. So we have six members and the Senate has two at-large. So it's a 12 member instead of a 10 member. Our side has already been appointed. I'm not sure about the Senate side yet. Do folks follow me on that? So the concern is that there isn't anyone representing mental health issues on justice oversight because our health and welfare committee, as it used to be called, was changed to human services committee. And after a while, the mental health jurisdiction of human services committee got moved over to health care committee. So I was suggesting to Representative Lippert that we do 12 members. We add in health care committee on the House side, keep in one member at large, and then in the Senate, <clears throat> change them to two members at large because their health and welfare committee, which is equivalent to our human services committee, also takes care of mental health. That may be something we want to propose. That makes sense to folks? 
Maybe. I, I don't know. We have so many committees and so many people. I'd have to think about it. Well, I can tell you that sometimes we have a hard time meeting, getting a quorum. Um, and quite often it's harder to have senators meet than house members. And quite often um, there may be only a couple senators or three sometimes you never get the full and even on the house side you even on the house side sometimes you have a hard time getting enough members to meet so i just put that out there thoughts questions on anything well of course uh, right by making the committee larger, you make the quorum number larger too, right? So. Yeah, you'd need seven. Yeah. Instead of six. But there may be more opportunities not to struggle so much. So questions on any other part of the draft? So at this point, I think we're in holding pattern. Um, would someone be willing to reach out to DOC and find out about the terminology of Vermont residents? Any takers on that? I don't see any takers. Kurt, I'll do it. I mean, Chuck, sure. whatever your name is. <laughs> John. Um, you can call me Carl. <laughs> Carl. 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 So we can you, you a suggestion suggestion of who I ask about that? Um I hate to bother Commissioner Baker. Would it be Monica or Dale? I can, I, Monica? Monica, I think. Yeah, I'll follow Or Al Cormier. Why don't you do Al Cormier? Oh, there you go. Why don't you talk to Al? Connect with Al. I think, you know, I don't want to consume Commissioner Baker. Let's should, talk to Al Cormier. If you can, I'm thinking should, of. Should we assume that they wanted, that what they're really interested, what they're trying to say is Mississippi? Okay. I don't think they're aware. They're not aware of the nuances that we may do an exchange with other states one-on-one -on -one yeah. for maximum yeah. security because we don't have okay. maximum security here in Vermont. So why don't we just take a break and um, is there anything else that's coming up to light here on this draft that people... Mary, do you see this in conflict at all with the rest of the bill, S3? Um, not necessarily. Um, it just seems as though health care has added a lot of specific languages not to look or to look at outside, um, you know, treatment like within our communities and all of that. And I guess I would have thought that was understood. You were looking across the board at everything. So I don't even know why you need this specific language in there, but that's just my humble opinion. If a group is looking, they need to look at this on all angles, all sides of it, in order to bring back a report that is um, that is um, balanced and, and, and understood that you've looked at all angles of it. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not totally sure why they've got this very specific language, very specifically for the person in question. And yes, we all want to protect everyone's rights. I get that. But why the special language is there, I'm not getting it. And this is kind of somewhat new from what was in the rest of the bill, but whatever. So Mary, you're really looking at what they've put in for models for forensic treatment other than inpatient facilities. Um, right, well, I'm... And then models that do not rely on involuntary meds. 
Is that the right. I mean, I mean, technically, you would be looking at all of that, mm-hmm. you know, on both sides of the issue, you know, facilities or or your community based initiatives within what what is available there. And I think that was the way it was understood, especially when it came from the Senate, that you would be looking at all aspects. So I don't know why you're technically looking to almost promote one over another. I would think you would keep it kind of balanced, but far be it for me. Okay. And that may just be my opinion, but it is highlighted there very specifically. So I want to be clear in where you're referring to. Is that the one for that's highlighted G on page? Okay, let me let me get back to the. Okay. Okay, so that would be da 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 da. Okay. Um. Okay, models for okay other other than inpatient and com, other models for forensic treatment other than inpatient facilities, including community based. Mm-hmm. So other than we kind of say we're not going in the direct. You're already almost setting, or at least in my interpretation, they may not mean that, but it's almost like sounding like we don't want to even look at inpatient facilities. We're looking more to include other things. And again, as I said, originally what was thought in this this um, committee looking at the different pieces for if there was a need or wasn't a need for a facility, that you would be addressing all of that. Mm-hmm. So I'm remembering uh, Deputy Commissioner Fox's testimony last Friday that he they were concerned health care committee and he acknowledged this as well. The intent wasn't to start from a basis of we're doing a facility, a forensic facility. It's looking at all the options out there and then deciding whether or not to do a facility and report that as well. Right. And that's what I just said. You know, uh-huh. you're looking at all of it. You're you're not by having the having this committee, you're not saying that there's going to be a facility. This is the the work of this committee that should be coming back to us with all the reasons why you shouldn't uh-huh. and if there are reasons why you should. So to highlight one almost puts it out there like you'll be looking at one more than another, but obviously and Deputy Commissioner Squirrel, or I mean Fox, when you know has gone along with the health care committee, and they may have a reason. And until we hear from Representative Lipper, we're not going to know what their reasoning is. So we can sit here and kind of guess what they were thinking, but I guess we need to hear what they are technically thinking. Okay, so we'll ask that of Bill when he comes comes down. Anything else? Um, Scott? Um, Yes, well, along the lines of what Mary was just saying, um, maybe the, the language ought to be reflect more the idea that forensic treatment might might be a system, um, and it, and it might include inpatient facilities, right? Um, mm-hmm. it just, it's just that it would be a different a different uh, uh, a different model a different model of treatment, right? Right. So when Bill comes down, we can ask him this when it comes through. So Sarah just came in from upstairs. So what's happening upstairs? So it's funny to, I came back downstairs to room 33. <laughs> um, um, the, the committee, uh, the healthcare committee uh, reviewed the draft language that, that was shared with our committee. And I think 
um, the chair is prepared to come down at 2.30 or whenever you'd like him to. I think they're wrapped up if, as soon, if Phil can send. Hang on. Okay. That's John's phone. Sure. If if our, if Phil can send an a, 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 an invitation and just let him know whenever you want to, Madam Chair. And um, I think it's pretty. They made a couple of uh, small changes that I think um, Representative Lippard would, would walk through with us. Um, there were just some language changes, and also with the last section of the bill, there were they accepted. Um, we talked about a recommendation. About the um, members at large. And the, yeah. I don't, has, our, has our committee been talking about this concurrently? So everybody knows that that last section is, mm -hmm. is the joint. It's not a new committee. It's the Joint Justice Oversight Committee. So they, they thought that that was a, um, they appreciated, they wanted to have a uh, health care meant, you know, right. uh, voice at the table because of the importance of hearing so about mental health. Keeping our member at large and yep. adding health care, and then the Senate would have two. Okay. Yep. So are they doing an, another draft? I think they took they took a straw poll vote on this um, with knowing what a couple of the, they were kind of like wordsmith type level changes. Um, and they'll gonna, they're going to come down to us. And I think they're going to recommend that and make those changes and make that amendment, recommend the amendment to House Judiciary. Okay. So. So what, let's take a break until 2.30 here. And Phil, if you could just send an email to Bill and say that you've sent him the invite already. So just say we're, we're back at 2.30 if he can meet with us at 2.30. Okay. Okay. Kurt, did you have your hand up? Uh, yeah, can I squeeze in a quick question on S45? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a quick one. You know, we, we, it has the crimes in it and they're all, it just occurred to me that because of what happened with the um, good, uh, good time that we might anticipate a question from the floor as to whether anybody uh, who committed murder would be available. It, are people who committed murder or something like that, is it possible that they would be on probation? It could be. I think, isn't that the testimony we heard? It's probably pretty unlikely, but. Because uh, yeah, that's broken. not one of the crimes list. I mean, all the crimes are sexual abuse and, and there's, it's not the big 12 and things like that are not in there. I would think if someone is charged with murder, they're gonna be held on bail. That would be my assumption, but you know what assume means. So it depends what the court decides to do. Um, I'm just thinking of how Karen's going to answer that question. Right. So maybe, <laughs> maybe also in your email with Al Cormier, you could ask him that and tell him he can respond to that later. <laughs> the more prevalent one is how do you define Vermont resident? Should, should it be under the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections? For that. Well, with that, with that question, my the second question be better asked of um, Dale Crook. Yeah, that might be more appropriate for Dale. Yeah. Or maybe um, Karen should ask it. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, somebody ask it. <laughs> um, so I would think that um, for Karen's purposes and for anyone's purposes, if somebody was facing that type of a crime, the state attorney is there to bring their motion. So that would be, if the state attorney has no issues, then I think it's risen to the level of, okay. So I don't think Karen would have a problem. Just say the way the vehicle is for the state attorney to bring the motion. That's and I true. think we'd be covered with that. Yeah, I mean, if somebody is charged with murder, that's, I mean, Linda's right. It's going to be what the prosecution wants, <clears throat> you know, and, and I don't know, ask so in, the, ask so in that case, the person would be, say, might have been sentenced to probation. But when it comes to DOC at the midpoint, they would request a discharge because they have to. And then the state's attorneys would say, wait a minute, this guy committed murder. We don't think he should get it. No, 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 no. They no, would, no, no, they no. would need to prove by preponderance of the evidence that the person's no longer yeah. a risk to the community or to the the victim is gone. 
but a risk to the public safety of the community, they would also need to show by clear and convincing evidence that the person has violated or is not in compliance with their conditions of probation. So if they can't do that, it's possible that the, per that the murderer on probation would be uh, granted a discharge at, ha at midpoint. If they're complying, and I would think their probation is going to be a little longer than two years. Their probation is going to be four to six years. And that yeah. ties into the, what bill was it that we just did that um, House 20, H, H20, where we they had the um, amendment from the Senate that there would be a report in terms of uh, looking at what conditions, looking at your risk assessments um, that would help the judge for felony <clears throat> provisions that would help the judge in setting those conditions. Remember the amendment that came through from the Senate? We yeah, took a yeah. on that and it was 10-1 in our committee. And that is to help, particularly with those cases of murder, that you'd really find out is there an uh, underlying issue, be it substance abuse, be it mental health issues, be it a higher risk for, for risk behavior, that that really looking at those assessment tools and reporting back to see if we need to change any statutes to really help the judge be more informed when setting conditions for folks who are going to be on probation <laughs> felony charges. Remember that? Right. Yeah, yeah, I remember that's it. But, tied but... In, that's tied into your question. If someone's going to get probation for murder, the goal is there's more understanding of what drove the person to commit the crime. But we but it is possible. I mean we have I mean the it is possible that a person could be on probation for murder. That's and could question. get a midpoint, would get a midpoint review and could be released at midpoint. So that's a question to ask Dale. Okay. One. Number okay. two, if that is the case, what's their usual length of probation? Right. Well, then, okay. I'll, 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 I'll let Linda answer. Linda? Um, yes, thank you. So I would going to say all that, but I think it's really important to understand that the only parties to the criminal prosecution are the state and the defendant. So the state prosecutor is there for that sole purpose of arguing if there's a reason for this not to happen. So I think that your bases are covered and I think you know the time for someone who's convicted of murder or one of those crimes is really going to be out there with issues. So the state prosecutor will show up if there's something going on. Check it out with Dale and then we'll figure it out once you hear back from Dale. Okay. Anything else? So let's take a quick five minute break. Did you hear it? You, Phil, you've checked with Bill, right? And said 2.30? I did not send it to him because it looked like you were gonna go a bit longer and I didn't know how long you wanted to be on okay. break. I think he's expecting to come at 2.30. Um, Okay, so let's take a five minute break and come back at 2.30. Why don't we do that?